So, um, so Mark, I was trying to uh, run the benchmarks on multiple platforms. To uh, so I saw one of your project, which is a multi-configuration project, where you use a matrix to label to run uh, the whatever build in multiple agents. Mm -hmm. So I was I was thinking of doing the same thing, but uh, so I have three branches, three benchmarks I want to run. So it's a multi-branch project. I'm not sure if if in a multi-branch project I can add that configuration matrix. So is there a combination? Is there a project type of a project which I can use which mixes both of them, or would I have to use a configuration multi-configuration project with a simple pipeline and uh, add my branches and uh, then write uh, some shell steps to run the benchmark, uh, Java command to run the benchmarks. How should I do it? So the, the, I think what you would want to do is use a declarative, a decla or use a pipeline, and we probably want to put it in as a, de as a declarative pipeline, and let's use the matrix operator to do it. So that way you don't have to, f you don't have to wrestle with the old school thing that I'm using. I have those multi-config projects because I want to be sure that I don't break compatibility. They're actually okay. not the best way to do it now. The best way to do it now is declarative pipeline with matrix. So, okay. so there's, a, there's a much better way to do it thanks to declarative pipeline. And you can find, you can find documentation about it sure. on Jenkins.io. And I'll, I'll do that. Okay. Okay. Uh... So the second thing I think which we should discuss is the estimator class. I've, I've raised your PR for that. Uh, Fran and Omkar have uh, reviewed it. Uh, they've given an initial review to it. So, um, so would you guys like me to uh, discuss the design uh, of the class or is it something you would, you would first want to review the PR and discover it yourself or would it help uh, you guys if I discuss what I've done and what I've thought about it? the experience for the class. So I'd like to hear the, uh, a brief design, a design description for me. Uh, your insights or your comments can be quite helpful for me as I try to understand it. Okay, so, um, so I tried this UML diagram thing on IntelliJ. I'm not sure if this is going to be very helpful, but so the class, uh, the repo estimator class, size estimator class is it, ex it can work uh, in two ways. The first is, uh, so it has two constructors. The first requires a git SEM source object, uh, which will be used to uh, analyze if it has a cache dot git directory or not. If it does, it would calculate the size. If it doesn't, it would switch. It would, uh, it would try to find uh, uh, an extension which has, up, uh, which has implemented the extension point we've provided. Uh, the second, constructor I've added is, uh, so the first constructor limits us to multi-branch uh, projects. That is that is the only place where we uh, use a cache.get directory. We can find a cache directory. So the second constructor would just ask for a repo you, uh, for a, the repository URL and would try to find the, the, ex, uh, the implementation of the extension point we've created. And if it does exist, we would provide the recommendation uh, on what Git implementation the, uh, the plugin should use for that project. So the input can be two things. It can be uh, the, a Git SEM source object or a repo URL. The output will always be uh, a string, which would either be, uh, which would either be Git, JGit, or I've chosen none if I don't want to recommend anything and want to use the default, um, uh, re, uh, default git tool resolved by uh, the plugin. How that is working, I'm going to explain it in more detail, but this is the basic uh, input and output of the class expectations. So, um, so I think I should directly uh, show the code a little bit. And then uh, one of the major problems right now we have, which uh, Fran has pointed out clearly, and that is something I need to work upon uh, after this discussion. So, so the first constructor, uh, it asks for the git SEM source. So 
once it uh, uh, once it's initialized the class it will uh, so how it calculates the size is, is that it uh, I'll, I'll show you the method the, the method would uh, try so we are not locking the cache we're just getting the entry then we're uh, uh, then we check if the cache directory if it exists if we check that if it if it has a dot git directory or not if it does we would um, calculate the size by size of directory api and uh, store it in a uh, class member and uh, and if it if this doesn't happen if we don't have a cache the second option we have is to use an api uh, so for that i have created the extension point the extension point I would like to show to you guys is where is the extension point? Yeah, here. The extension point right now is uh, so uh, when I was looking at the documentation of how to create an extension point, I saw two ways of making it. One is through the singleton pattern, and the second is the descriptor describable pattern. So um, to be very honest, I am not 100% sure on how the descriptor describable pattern is working. Single intel pattern, I could understand what it was, uh, how I could design, I could how I could design the extension point through it. And uh, I'm not sure if the decision of using it was, uh, uh, and not using the, that pattern is wrong here, but what this, this extension point is expecting is, uh, is that uh, I provide you the uh, URL of the repository. I assume that the uh, implementer has the credentials for the user. And how did I uh, reach to this uh, assumption or uh, to this analysis is that I looked at the Git, uh, GitHub plugin, uh, branch source plugin, and I was looking at how I could cre uh, initialize a client, a GitHub client. How are they? Uh, how have they how they have wrapped the github apis java apis so i was looking that they either they need the user id password or they can use a token so initially i was thinking of passing the credentials from here as well but then i realized that the client there would uh, they would have the user credentials for the particular if they if the if the if the project is using that plugin they would also have the credentials so for me I think the only information I need to send to them is the repository U, uh, URL, and they would just need to uh, they would just need to send a GET request uh, on the repository URL to get the size uh, through a JSON response from the uh, API. So this is the only method. We, the, the second method is uh, is where I have right, the issues right now. So as I was looking at extension points, what I could see was extension points in any plugin are made to extend the plugins functionality to other plugins as well. So we basically like I so my reference point was the listener uh, extension point we have in uh, in the Git plugin within the Git. Uh, if 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 I want to be precise, it's within Git status. We have uh, we have an extension point, an extension point called listener. So I kind of modeled the extension point in a similar way, I, and I can see that this this extension point is meant to provide uh, the capability of listening to some updates. Now my extension point is very is different, is actually opposite to this thing. What we want is that we are not extending. What we want is that we want other plugins output in our uh, class. We don't want, we, we're not sending them, we're not extending any capability to them. We are actually using their capability to get something um, for our uh, need. So the issue with uh, this, this need is, which Fran has pointed out, that what I am doing right now is that I am uh, using the extension list and uh, so I, I, I expect that whatever plugin has implemented the repository size API, I would call the method for the repo URL I have and get the size of the repo. Now, uh, the issue with this is that this is a list. I was, while I was designing, uh, it's, it's actually a very, uh, it's a huge mistake. While I was designing uh, the extension point, I, I I was only thinking about the GitHub branch source plugin and I never, I actually, it's a very, 
So the mistake is that I didn't think about other plugins which might also implement it. And we we would have a list of implementations, and I don't have any method right now to distinguish which implementation I want to use. So Fran was uh, suggesting uh, suggested he in the PR that uh, there uh, we might uh, want to find a way where uh, we can use the URL to find out what kind of extension class we would want to use. So, uh, so what I understood from his comment, and he may, he may clear me right now, Fran, you can clear me right, clear, uh, clear me here. I was, uh, what I, uh, what I uh, got to know was that if I have a GitHub URL, I would, uh, I would extract maybe the word GitHub from it and look for the class if through the list, I would look for the class. Uh, actually, I, as I'm discussing this, I uh, this might not be possible. So the the part where I'm confused right now is how do I how do I clearly get to know which uh, plugin classes are implementing this API? What I could find find from yeah yes ma. Um, Actually, Fran, Fran has much deeper experience here. So Fran, if you were going to say anything, I will defer to you. Uh, you know, what I, what I wanted to say is, okay, Richard, uh, thinking an extension, extension, just like in a class that is annotated in, an speci uh, in a specific way. And in the moment that the plugin is installed or in the moment that the Jenkins instance is, uh, uh, is being started, it's loaded and it's available uh, for any other component, let's say component, in the Jenkins instance. So uh, you are calculating the size of the repo uh, in two ways. The first one is just using the, the Git cache, okay? But the other one, uh, but the other one is just using the API. That API is gonna be uh, totally dependent on the Git system that you have behind you. It's not the same API for GitHub than for GitLab than for Bitpacket or, or whatever else. So uh, what, I, uh, what I'd like you to, to think about is the way that you say, okay, uh, who's going to provide that API and the way to uh, <clears throat> to calculate that size using the API? each plugin, each plugin that is depending on Git plugin. So what we have to do is just to, uh, as you have said, uh, provide an abstract class that will be uh, extended by the other plugins. Those classes in those plugins can be uh, annotated with the extension class. So we can, uh, at any point in Jenkins, we can always uh, read from them. In our case, because we are going to to say, okay, uh, give me the full list of uh, reporti uh, repository size API classes, and we need a, a mechanism to decide uh, of the full list because if in our Jenkins instance we have the GitHub plugin, the GitLab, the Bitbucket, and so on, and all of them are just extending and giving us and providing us the mechanisms to uh, to discover the the size of the repository using the api that list uh, will contain all those extensions so we need a mechanism to say uh, this git repo is a github repo so i'm going to filter by uh, I, i'm going to filter that list so i can get or, or, or I discard the rest of the um, of the extension point, and I'm getting only the one that is going to give me the API for this uh, Git, uh, GitHub uh, API. The same for GitLab and so on. So what you, what you okay. have doing here is just to creating a point, something where the rest of the uh, where, where the providers, uh, and we can also uh, can have just some and generic uh, way to calculate that. I don't know if it's possible or not. Maybe it's just doing a clone in a temporary file, just as a, as a, as a default implementation. But what I mean is that uh, you know what is the, 
the URL where you want to connect. And I say the URL because it's probably the easiest uh, field that we have just to, de to, determine, to determine which is our Git system, okay? But if we have another, uh, another way, it's totally fine. So we have to determine, uh, we have to, uh, to discover which is the Git system that we have behind our API just to filter in that list of, uh, in that extension list, which is the extension which will provide us the correct method to calculate that size. I don't know if uh, I might myself from the source. It's, it's clear to me, John. I, I understand this. So, yeah, and I guess. Uh, we'll Yes, yes, please, Justin. Uh, one other thing I'd say too is that uh, you also have to remember that uh, people can locally install like a GitLab or GitHub Enterprise. Uh, so you'll have arbitrary URLs as well. So those plugins may need to provide what are registered URLs potentially, um, or somehow you need to understand like for this repo, which plugin is configured to, to handle this, which I'm not sure if that second thing is possible, but perhaps the other plugin is going to need to tell you what URLs uh, are configured for that plugin. Okay. Yes, Mark, yes, what are you saying? Would, could we delegate the responsibility to decide if a particular URL can be handled or not to the extension implementer and make part of the contract be that if they can't implement it, they return a negative one or they return a nonsense value like zero, right? Then, then you don't have the responsibility to decide, shall I, shall I call you? You rather tell them, I promise I'm going to call you a lot. You need to exit quickly if you can't handle this thing. And you need to accept that you may get, you will receive things that you cannot handle. So I solemnly promise to send the Git, Git, GitHub URL to the Bitbuck end, Bitbucket endpoint, uh, to the Bitbucket extension, and to the Giddy extension, and to the GitLab extension. They're all going to get it, and they must all return a negative one if they don't intend to process it. Could Would that mm -hmm. work so that you don't have to put any logic at this layer to, to decide um, should, should the callers handle this? Should I call them? Yeah, it's almost a matcher pattern. A match. Yeah. Yes, and, like that, you, and that's only just you, to add to add a new uh, or a yes, a new method in your uh, abstract class that has to be implemented by the by the implementers. So I think that Mark is uh, has pointed the the easiest ways to to fill that mechanisms of deciding, which is the uh, implementer of the of the API of which you know. So if we implement, uh, so if we uh, add that method in our contract, that means that I would only get from the list. I would only get the valid implementation and nothing else. Mm -hmm. So and I would not have to say that they match. So would uh, still uh, would I have to uh, keep a check? Uh, to uh, to see if any other implementation has not um, no so that wouldn't happen right so if so my so the even if we have that contract and they return uh, a minus one let's say uh, what issue we might have is that so we use the extension list to get the extensions which are instantiated in the Jenkins in uh, environment so if any if any provider, let's say five providers have implemented the extension point. If I call the, if I call, call the get extension list um, uh, function API, it would give me the list. Okay, but I would have, since I have a method which, uh, which might be a Boolean or might be, let's say it, it returns a Boolean false. If the URL is not, um, if the URL is GitHub, but it's, it's been implemented by Bitbucket, it says I cannot implement this. So let's just return false or minus one zero, whatever we're uh, returning for the size. So I would just keep it. I would just uh, before 
calling for the size for the, the method which is uh, trying to find out the size i can just keep a check okay uh, if it's if this if uh, if the uh, let's say whatever the contract the method is if it's false or if it's minus 1 i would not call for the size for that particular instance uh, taken from the list is that what we would do that that feels more complicated than what all i was envisioning was you call every implementation ask their get size of repository with the repo url if they return you a minus 1 you know to ignore them and and they're responsible to decide in their get size of repository url or get size of repository method should they actually ask the remote system or do they look at the url or they look at some other some other thing they know and say this is nothing i can process okay I, yeah, I, I, but I, 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 I may be off. It just seems like it's it's a place where we can ask the question and rely on and tell the tell them as part of the contract. You're going to get asked questions for things that aren't yours. Your responsibility is to return minus one as quickly as you reasonably can. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, I think that that can that's easier for implement to implement for us. And and, 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 and us maybe. Decide. Minus one may be a poor choice. Does I don't think that Java has a concept of an unsigned long. So I guess minus one is fine. But a repository size of either zero or less than zero, both of those are nonsense, right? Neither of those are useful to a repository size estimation. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I'll uh, I'll add that to our contract and I'll uh, update that. Okay. Okay. So that's how we're going to do it. uh the last thing i think uh, for this class is once so how do we decide what implementation we have to use i just have a simple um, constant which right now i have so i assume that every size i'm going to get is in kbs so that is also something i i might need to specify uh, not sure how do i specify that in the extension point except writing A Java doc. I am not sure. Yes. Why? Why KBs? You've got a long. It's a sixty-four bit quantity. There, there isn't a file that I know of that's ever going to overrun. And I, I, I hope nobody tries to do a terabyte-sized Git Git repository. So the reason for KBs, Mark, is that first that the file the The API I use to estimate the cache it returns the size in KBs. Oh, okay. Good. Uh, Good choice uh, then. yeah and the second is the uh, the apis uh, github or gitlab so i've tested it with github they also provided in kbs perfect so that is i, I yeah so it's okay. 5 mb right now the switch is 5 mb right now uh to be more precise on what the switch might be i might uh, i might run a lot of tests for this particular reason to uh, to get closer to the point where the nature of jgit's performance changes that point which we found out in phase 1 through the results so right now i've taken it as 5 mb so what happens is if it's greater than 5 mb uh, we recommend git and if it's not we recommend jgit uh, another thing which was uh, which i considered was that even if i recommend git i don't know if git is installed in the system or not in the particular node i'm running to so i used i uh, borrowed the resolve git tool uh, implement the logic which is in git util so what i do is once i decide from my side what implementation i should use i uh, run it through the uh, git util dot resolve tool and uh, i've done it here Deter- determine git tool so so it basically uses that uh, resolve git tool method and if it has git it'll recommend git if it doesn't it would uh, so if it doesn't it would go for the default installation so one question i had here was while i wrote a unit test for this particular um, for for just uh, the cache uh, so if i have a cache would i uh, get the right uh, tool or not so while i was doing that uh, the so the the recommendation from my class should have been jgit and my, the before resolving the git tool before checking if the system has it or not it was jgit but once i uh, i i passed it through this method it 
return git tool to me so i i actually was not git git to me sorry and i was not sure why is it doing that so as i i i, I was trying to debug it 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 looks for the descriptor uh, implementation for the particular um, tool which uh, which we are trying to as the parameter we have passed here so it could not find jgit and hence it went for the default installation is why would that happen i'm not sure because jk is something which is pre is always installed in our uh, would be installed because it comes within the plugin so that's something maybe uh, once you look at the pr and um, so i was running the test and i was getting that so i was not sure why that was happening so i thought I should tell you yeah I, I, good question i don't know the answer i, I there's some oddity in the constructor of the git of the of git scm that have surprised me in the past so you may be exploring areas that that will will have to learn more okay so and this okay. This does check the system git. Like it doesn't only rely on Jenkins installing git, right? Um, Justin, I am actually not sure about it. I, as okay. far as I know, it checks uh, the the agent or the node wherever it is. It checks if the git installation is present or not. So there's a there's a there's a way to install tools in Jenkins. Yeah. Uh, you can have Jenkins manager your tools for you, you tell it what binary you want and what version you want and stuff like that. And it'll make sure that it's installed. Uh, but I've also seen a lot of people not use that. Uh, so if it's like actually doing a check on the system, then that would work. But if it's not, and it's relying on people using the Git tool or the installation of tools via Jenkins, that's only going to cover partial cases. So just something to look at. Okay, I will look into that. The reason why I did not was that I assumed that since uh, this is being already used with uh, the uh, existing functionality, it is used to resolve the Git implementation. I assumed that this would look out for every case. Uh, so I did not uh, went deep into how this is uh, resolving or how it's actually finding the executable. I'll, I'll look into it. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe these guys know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I think Rishab, your your assumption is a good assumption, and if if this f method is flawed, I think we handle that separately. You're, you, I think you made a very good assumption to think that if this method is not doing the right thing, we should solve that as a separate separate solution. That's fair. Yeah, because because this thing has the node, it has a, a string name for the proposed Git tool. It has the environment variables, so it's got all the things it could it could potentially use to answer the questions Justin Justin noted. If it fails to do that, that seems like a bug that we need to solve separately. Okay. Yeah, because I imagine you're using this in other places to to invoke the right Git. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Cool. No, that's fair. Yeah. So. Um... So I think this is what is happening with the class and uh, the biggest problem right now, We what we discuss is the biggest problem and that is something I'm going to handle right now. Uh, apart from this, so uh, my next concern with the class was that how do I um, actually, so I wanted to test it in a real uh, case. I wanted to build a real case scenario with this class and to do that, so I know that I can rely on the cache not 100% rely on it, but I know that the cache. So I've written unit tests for uh, for cases where uh, if I ha if I don't have a cache repository or if I have a cache repository, how the class would work. I don't have cases that I've actually never tested the class with the extension. So uh, so with respect to testing the extension functionality, the second heuristic. Uh, before so I I've I've seen that we have uh, an annotation called test execution uh, test extension which actually allows us to uh, implement an extension just for the test so the concern the concern with that approach is i have is that i would have to so if i'm working the way git branch source plugin would want to work they would so they create a github client so i would have to add a lot of depend the dependencies they are using the libraries they are using i would have to shift all of that for the test 
uh, only or i could just use a, a an http client which would just uh, perform a get request um, with credentials or without credentials that would not have a github client it would just be an http client performing a get request uh, on the particular repository url that is how i could test it within git plugin i was actually thinking to uh, try to go to git branch source plugin and implement it uh, just for my uh, local system and then try to work that out uh, install the plugin uh, create a project and then see if my my system is able to uh, my implementation is able to use the extension uh, the implementation provided by the extension and uh, get the size so which so uh, for so my the, the purpose of the whole thing is that uh, for the demo i i was thinking that i if i could do this i could show the uh, this class working for a ca for a cache repository how we are going to estimate the size and maybe uh, when we go to get scm for a single pipeline when we're just checking out the project there also i can use this class how i if we have an implemented um, api we would not have to call the get scm source constructor we could call we could just use the repository url to estimate the size and um, give a recommendation at that level as well so so to do that i need to either i need to uh, go to get trans source plugin and create an implementation so should i work on that and actually uh, see if this implementation would work or not extension point sorry so i i i like very much the idea of of doing a, a a concrete implementation in another plugin i think that's a that's a very healthy thing to do however you did describe that the extension point test inside may help you diagnose more quickly than using a second plugin. Um, back to your, so, so yes, I think it's great to use the separate plugin as a, as a, a that's, the, that's where the real implementation has to be anyway. So that mm -hmm. makes, makes a lot of sense. But in your suggestion on how to test inside this plugin, the test doesn't have to actually make a call to anything right the extension point you implement in the test could just do something like given a particular url always return this size or given this other url because it's inside your test you can you can do all More sorts practice. of things that avoid any calls to the outside that keep things very 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 simple and say if i see it uh, if i see a, rep a repository that ends with the number five i'll always return five if I see a repos those kinds of tricks, because it's Can a test. Actually, yeah. Yes, Mark, sorry. <laughs> I was just saying that Fran suggested uh, that I, I can mock the HTTP response, whatever response I need from the API, and uh, I can test it like that. So, uh, so yeah, that will be the quickest way. So I'm going to do that first to, uh, after I uh, improve, uh, update the contract, the implementation, the extension pointer, and, uh, for the demo, I'm I'm thinking that I can um, I can make a quick implementation there. I I actually uh, I started a discussion thread on the uh, Jenkins Dev Group to to just know from where I can start, where what what would be the best place to uh, implement the extension point I'm providing because that will be a that'll be easier for me to figure out where I could uh, do that. So if I if I get the response there, then it's good. If I don't, then should I? Is this is this is it okay if I uh, contact uh, the the repository maintainers? I I saw that I'm actually not sure of the name. I I have seen the GitHub handle. It's Bitwise Man. Yes, Liam Liam Newman. You Liam can Newman. certainly you can okay. certainly ask Liam questions. He's very very willing. Uh, he'll he'll respond as time allows. So so I'll ask him where I could do this and. Uh, so that will be quicker for me to actually implement it and then use it for our uh, demo purposes and actually for our further analysis yes so um, so i think this is it for uh, the class i actually have a uh, lot more things to share but i think the time has ended either we could do it on friday 
uh, on friday i would have uh, so i have uh, some new benchmark results omkar was very helpful with creating uh, different repositories with different kind of parameters we needed and uh, we have some results from uh, those analysis uh, i also wanted an uh, results from different platforms i was looking at your instance and i was thinking to uh, run that or i could not i could not do it so i i, I don't have that right now so if uh-huh. you guys are comfortable we could um, share the result. i could share the results right now whatever i have uh tishab so yes, i was just concerned of one thing like uh, did you check why it was failing on windows your pr yes omkar i actually uh, if you could see uh, when you raised the concern uh, the next uh, commit i i committed uh, okay. so it was failing oh, because yeah. i was okay. i was expecting something wrong from the as assertion okay. okay i was not the windows returns get dot exe exe and uh, i yep. was expecting get so i changed that that is why it okay. was happening i'm sorry okay. i did not uh, directly answer your uh, question there i'm sorry okay no no not to do i missed it. okay yeah so if you guys want i can share the results right now uh, if you'd like i could share them on friday what would you guys prefer uh let me double check my calendar good question i think i think i may actually have other things that are colliding on my calendar yeah i'm i'm supposed to be in another meeting right now so it's probably best if it's okay with you if we were to defer it until friday it is okay with me i uh, i actually think uh, the results we i have they don't I'm not sure if we could use them right now to uh, get something actionable but nevertheless we need to discuss them so we can discuss them on friday yeah. okay okay and uh, i think the last thing with fran in uh, fran so we were discussing that we uh, we could uh, so we could imp- the, the, whatever the implementation we have discussed the uh, update on the extension so fran would you like me to do it first and then you would review it would you uh, so i i inferred i'm not sure if i inferred correctly what you were saying in the get get a channel was that we could do it uh, together was there that yeah was, what i mean what i mean yeah. is that uh, for example tomorrow morning uh, because i'm in central european uh, time zone uh, we can overlap uh, several hours so at uh, anything that you can uh, try uh, we can be reviewing, uh, reviewing almost live because i can jump into the uh, into uh, github and see okay this is what i mean uh, i was thinking more about this other thing uh, however i've put a couple of comments uh, during this meeting just to try to uh, make clear uh, what mark justin and i was saying about having the uh, how to filter about how to filter the the extension list using a, a method in the contract that the other implementers uh, have to to develop okay so okay. have a look at that and if you have any question uh, regarding the that approach uh let us know in gitter and and as, as i say tomorrow morning is uh, uh, we, we can overlap more time so we can just doing almost live sure sure fan that'll that'll be great i'll be available uh, throughout the morning and so we could we yeah. could do that yeah and i'll try to uh, do whatever we've discussed today through the night yeah. and if i'm so that will be better for us tomorrow first, first try try to have a, a look at that uh, think how to how to do it and tomorrow we can discuss that with more uh, uh when you have to spend more time thinking about how to do it with more sure. context okay 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 that'll be great okay i think that's it for the meeting thank you thank you everyone thanks rishab bye thanks <laughs> bye